Since it seems many of you are distracted by this, so we'll go ahead and get started on this. But basically all I asked you guys to do was to find a, um, to write the bearing and to graph it as far as a plane in the wind, okay? Um, and that's really what I wanted everybody to be able to, even for those of you that are not paying attention, I would expect you could at least go ahead and get to that point. Um, so a plane is flying at a bearing of 17 degrees. Well, we can at least represent this as a vector, at least I hope. Seventeen degrees, and that would be three hundred and forty, right? And then, if we want to represent the bearing of the wind, well, that's blowing at um, seventy degrees, which is going to be something like this, and and that's going to be flowing at fifty miles per hour. Yes. Now, what the um, now what it's asking is is find the ground speed and the bearing of the airplane. So basically, what we're asking ourselves is, well, what happens to the airplane? The ground speed is basically, you know, as you're standing from the ground looking at an airplane, there's forces that are in, being impacted on the airplane. Like you have its regular route, but then also the wind is affecting it. So let's take here's our here's our plane, right? And then there's our wind. What if we? Oh, actually, before I even get to that point. Can we represent this as a vector? Do we have a angle and do we have a magnitude? Sorry. Yeah, our miles per hour is going to represent our magnitude. We're not like traveling mile, we're not traveling at a rate, so we're just going to use the rate as our magnitude. And then we're going to use our angle. Do we want to use cosine of 17 degrees, sine of 17 degrees? No. 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 We have to use our standard form, right, in our calculator. So if that's 17 degrees, then we know that this is going to be. 73 degrees. So I'll write this vector as 340 times the cosine of 17 degrees, the sine of 17 degrees. And that's all I asked you guys to do from this point. And I think that's fairly basic from your stamp stand of view. And now we can do the same thing for this vector. Again, we don't want to use 70 degrees. We want to use 20 degrees. No, we want to get to 90, right? Because they're complementary angles. If that's 17, then that has to be 73. Oh, I wrote it wrong. I'm sorry. I said something and I didn't write it. You're right. Thank you. I, I was a little too yeah. That was the whole point of finding 73, right? Yeah. So that's the cosine of 20 degrees and the sine of 20 degrees. OK. Now, again, the ground speed, again, is guys is asking us, like, what is happening to the plane Like, as both of these, um, as the wind is impacting the airplane? Basically, what we're looking for, guys, is the resultant vector. We're basically looking for what happens. Here's the plane. What happens when I add this vector? 50 degrees, right? At Here was the 20, right? So basically, if I take the wind, and I apply it to the airplane, then where is this airplane, like where is this airplane going to be going? Like what is this new angle of the airplane, which can be represented by this resultant vector? So let's have this be A as the airplane, and let's call this W for the wind. Now, could we use some math here real quick and go ahead and estimate these values? Yes? Oh, and just, just figure out cosine of 73 degrees. Times it by 340, right? Because these are scalars. What would that find? The component form. Here it is in scalar. This is the format in, um, in magnitude and direction. And let's go and figure out what the component form would be. So I'll just type in cosine of 73 times 300. Ooh. 340 times the cosine of 73. Now, I'm getting some decimals, and I want to be careful with my decimals. So I'm just going to store this as alpha A. But for writing purposes, I am going to give this as a 99.4. And then let's do the same thing. Let's do 340 times the sine. I'm sorry, yeah, sine of 73. 
and here I get 325.1, which I'm going to store as alpha b. So you're just solving for the magnitude of each? I'm not, it's not the magnitude, it's just the component form. V1, V2. I'll explain why. We haven't got to that point yet. But we're just, we're just rewriting in component form. All right. Now let's go ahead and figure out the wind. So basically what that says is this plane is traveling at a horizontal component of 99 and a vertical component of 325. Right? And that kind of makes sense. Right? It's more vertical than it is horizontal at 17 degrees. Right? That makes sense. Now let's go ahead and figure out the component form for here. Um, so that would be 50 times the cosine of 20, which is which would be 40, let's just round that to 47, which I'm going to store as alpha C. And then I'll do 50 times the sine of 20. And that gives me 17.1. And then I'm going to store that as alpha d. OK. So again, guys, these are, this is your A, represents your airplane. This is your wind. And doesn't this make sense? Shouldn't the horizontal component be much larger than the vertical component? Right? So that vector makes some sense. It's 47 only up to 17. So again, our question is, what is the ground speed? What is happening to this vector? Where is this? And basically what this represents right here is the airplane plus the wind. That's what we need to figure out. Right? If we need to figure out, like if you're flying an airplane, right? And let's just say you have it on autopilot. You're not correcting yourself. If you're flying an airplane and you have the wind is also blowing on you, that's going to push you faster. Yes? It's also going to push you off course unless you correct it. Would you guys agree? Right? If you're flying a kite, you have the kite in the air. The wind is blowing, it's going to take that kite over in that direction, right? Unless you're steering it back over there. But if you just let the wind take it, that's where it's going to take it into that direction. The same thing works with an airplane. Now, an airplane has engines that could correct the bearing, right? But if you're just flying at a certain angle and then the, and then the, sh um, and then the wind shifts you over, you're going to move. So our question is, like when we're asking for the ground speed, we're basically looking for what is the going to be the magnitude? Because here's your, here's your speed of your airplane. Here's the speed of the, of the wind. What is going to be the speed of the airplane plus the wind? Right? Does that make sense? Right? And obviously, we can see from our graph when we do the tail to end method, which we practiced last class period, which I'm not sure, Nathan, if you were referring to, but that's what I was talking about. This is why that tail to end method, tail to head method, is so helpful. Because all you're doing is taking one vector and then adding it to the other vector, right? And you guys can see that just intuitively when I figure out my answer, is, this, is the wind helping this vector go faster? Yeah. Isn't this length larger than it was just originally? Right? So I know when I find my answer, which is the ground speed of A plus W, I better get something that's going to be um, faster, right? I better get something that's faster than 340 miles per hour. Also, this angle got pushed over to the right more, right? It's not going to be 17 degrees anymore. It's going to have a different bearing. So that's what we need to figure out. So let's go ahead and figure out what A plus B is. Or sorry, A plus W. And basically that is, guys, all I'm going to do is take my stored answers. Oh, it's A and C, sorry. Mm -hmm. You just add the, add the components. And that's what we practiced last class period. You know, when I, on your notes, if you look up there, um, when you're adding your vectors, you're just adding the first components and the second components. So hopefully you stored your answers like me. So you can just go and do those. So answer A plus answer B is going to be 3. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. Answer A plus answer, answer C is 146.39. Now I am going to I'm going to store that as let's just do this as e. Alpha e. So my answer here 
is going to be 146 points. Um, let's just round that to four, and I'm going to store that as E. Comma, um, let's do B plus D. So I'll do alpha B plus alpha D. And again, if you don't have these, these are where I'm at getting the Bs and the Ds. Did I store B incorrectly? I think I did. B is 340 times the sine of 73. Yeah, I like stored B incorrectly. All right, so alpha B plus alpha D. 342? Yes? And then let's store that as F. Okay, so anyways, if I was just asking, hey, what's the component form of your vector? You could say that's it. But I'm going to store them because I already know I have to use these as calculations. So if I'm asking for the speed, that means I'm asking for the, the magnitude, right? So the speed, so the ground speed, is just going to be the square root of my vector, or my e, my first component squared, plus my second component squared. And again, I don't want to use my rounded answer. I want to use my stored answers. Correct? Yes? No? So therefore, I'll just use the square root. And then I can do alpha e squared plus stored answer f squared. And oh, did I not store that? Shoot. Eli, do you, do you get this? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Answer E. OK. So 372.2? I mean, I didn't do the storing because I calculated it. But I didn't store any of the other ones. Like I was OK. Wow. And I get 372. Um, 372 is the ground speed. And if I ask for the nearest thousandth, that would be 239. <laughs> well, so that would be to the nearest thousandth um, for in that respect. And I didn't really say how to be. So I mean, I'd just probably say, let's just round this to probably just round to the nearest hole or something like that. Um, but that's fine. And then the last one is to find the angle or the bearing. So first of all, to find the bearing, we have to understand, Stephen, to find the angle. So again, the angle in this case is we can say theta equals, and I'm not sure why still people are kind of talking. I'm kind of confused on that. But in this case, we could say tangent of your angle is basically f over e. Yes? No? Here is our component form. So you just bake your second component over your first component, which is basically what we wrote there. So I'll do tangent inverse of my stored answer f divided by my stored answer e. And I get 66.86. However, ladies and gentlemen, is that my bearing? No, but people still give it to me as my bearing. So that is this angle right here. That is 66 degrees. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the bearing, right? The bearing starts from due north. So what do we know about this angle and that angle? They're complementary. So just take 90 minus your last answer, and you get 23 degrees as you round to the nearest whole unit. Let's just round that to the nearest one. Okay.